Hi everybody, welcome to the Church of Adullam. I come to you because today has been a very interesting day today, to say the least. Um, I'm going to talk about scripture, but I'm not going to give a reference for the simple fact that I don't want to take, it won't take away from what I have to say, but I'm going to give a description of what the context of what I'm pulling from the Bible is going to talk about. See, I'm going to give a little bit of backstory and my testimony too. I've given a little bit of my testimony in the past on here, but this will kind of put it in a little better perspective. See, several years ago, 14 to be exact, I left the church. I left the Assemblies of God. I left the Assemblies of God for a number of reasons. During that time, I was working in Colorado Springs and I was really starting to struggle with my sexuality. At that time, I had a my first Facebook account. A lot of the members on church, in my church, was on there. And consistently, see, nobody ever really wanted to talk to me. But I, I constantly post that I was having a very difficult time in Colorado Springs. What they did not know was I was struggling with my sexuality at that point. Along about the same time, the pastor of the church at that time was caught for embezzling from the church. About $198,000. And almost put the church in bankruptcy. Sometimes later, the sins of God would put him in another church. This was on the heels, or this was before my, no, no, this was after my struggle. Maybe before, I, it was one of the reasons why I left. To. But I posted that I was struggling with my sexuality. One day I was praying, still very faithful to God at that point. I said, God, if you made me the way that I am, then I accept myself wholeheartedly as a gay man and all that pain and all that suffering left me and I said it silently so the devil could not hear me the devil is not a creator so he cannot he does not know our thoughts only God does now the devil can take and plant thoughts but he can't hear our thoughts so at that point I got up and I turned towards the gay community Now, mind you, I was still full of hurt. But at that point, I really wasn't understanding why. Well, it'd be several months later, I'd go, i eventually end up going, moving back. I think I moved back, yeah. Moved back to Illinois. My ex-wife and my kids were still attending church. I was not. My daughter was in a Christmas pageant there, and I walked into the church, and nobody even acknowledged my existence. Years later, I would find out why. They would know why my ex-wife and I were getting divorced. I was gay. But see, at that point in my life, that threw me into, now the reference that I'm going to give, Lodabar. Lodabar means no communication. It also means no pastor. Lodabar, in essence, is considered ghetto. Very poor city, town in Israel. The person that this gives reference to is Meshimapheth, 
which was the grandson of King Saul. Now to give backstory, he was crippled and forced to live in Bodabar. What had happened was a couple chapters prior, King Saul and all his family was being killed off one by one. A nursemaid at that time picked up Meshimapheth and as she was running, she dropped him, subsequently crippling him. With no other place to go, he went to Lodabar. Now, why he was probably spared was God's divine plan, for one. But two, because he was crippled. He was not fit to rule over Israel. He was not like King Saul. He was not like Jonathan who would have been the heir to the kingdom. But Jonathan had been killed off too. Now what's interesting is whenever David, after Saul dies, David asks if there was anybody left. And a servant of Saul says, by, by the name of Ziph, Z-I-P-H, says, yes, there is one, the grandson of Saul. Let's show Meshumbapheth, who lives in Lodabar. No communication. So David says to go fetch him. Now by this time, the man, the boy then, now man, is older. So he has to be carried. And when he is brought into the palace, which is by all rights his, because he should have been heir to the kingdom, but David is, and David promises that that everything shall be restored unto him. That everything that was denied of him because he is crippled and was hidden, I guess, <coughs> and he shall always have a place at the, the table of the king. He is set amongst the pretty people of the kingdom. So therefore, by all indications too, Meshimapheth is quite attractive man, but the problem is he's crippled. Now, that's that. So the name of this video is called No Pasture in Lunabar. And the reason for that is because for 14 years, since I left the church, I've had no pastor. I've wandered, if you will. I've looked for a place to lay my weary body. I've tried everything under the sun to find rest. But I've been distant from God, so simultaneously it'd be no communication. Ah, but little did I know. God might have had a hand in it the entire time. How many people out there left the church and was forced into a load of bar because they're gay? Because the church found out something about them that maybe they had a drinking problem or maybe there was a drug addict or because this, see, this is how the church works. Whenever they find out that you're what they perceive to be locked in sin, They'll turn their back on you. See, I remember specifically there was one time I, as an Uber driver, I had a group of Christian women in my car. They noticed I had crystals and things like that. And I tried to explain to them why that I left the church. They want to hear it. The church should not have been the reason why I left Jesus. Well, they don't understand. They did not understand. See, and I was forced in the little bar. I never really talked about why I left the church besides being gay. But being gay should have never never been a reason of me leaving the church. The problem was, was I believed a lie and I left the church to chase after a false ideology, a false idol, a false belief system, a false agenda. In other words, I also too brought destruction upon myself or I brought, 
I took myself into a place of no communication because I allowed the church to take away what was mine. See, you have to understand, too, that I was very, very eloquent in my word with God. I knew the Bible. I still know the Bible to this day. Not like I did then. But God had my hand, and that's probably probably why a lot of people might have been glad to see me leave, to be quite honest. I was gifted. I studied, ate, drank the Word of God. Not to be prideful or to boast, but I know that God had a plan on my life then. It just It's taken 14 years. Now, I watched a message with T.D. Jakes, and he's got two more messages in the series. But now this message, which was the final day of it, a long way from Lodabar. And see, I've been sitting here struggling to stay awake the entire time, falling asleep. God, I was tired. I don't know why, because I got a good night's rest last night. Well, see, the last time that this happened, it was a message that I needed to hear. The devil putting me to sleep I shouldn't have been falling asleep there was no reason for it but I wake up and then I catch the word of God and then the day my day makes sense see I was excited about going to church this morning I was ecstatic I wanted to hear what God had to say but I had a couple little stum stumbling blocks and then go get my tithe money got it then I went to Starbucks which kind of set me off five dollars and ninety or five dollars and nine cents for a grande cup of cappuccino that set me off so then I go to church I go into the sanctuary and I'm just not feeling something's just not feeling right I don't feel like being there so I go to the altar and I pray Oh, it's been a number of years since I've been to an altar in the church to pray. So as I'm sitting there waiting for service to start, something kind of gets planted on me that the pastor knows I'm gay. Why? I don't know. But then I'm falling asleep during the message. The message really wasn't for me, but I think that it was. But the devil was trying to keep me from receiving that message. I felt heavy, and whenever the service was over with, I just got up and left. I didn't say anything to anybody. Went and got some stuff, and then I went on, come on home. Turned it on TD Jakes as well. Might as well go ahead and have some church. So I turned this video on, realizing what it was, because I wanted to watch it. But I'm struggling staying, staying awake. But then T.D. Jake says something that sticks with me. And then I'm reminded of why I left the church the first place. Now, mind you, I had a word drop in on me after I was at church or shortly after there. After I said, here I am called as a gay man for men's ministry evangelize the gay community and I can't even talk about it because of the Assemblies of God's position on homosexuality. Then I watch this message. And then it kind of hits me. Wouldn't it be up to God to take me back to the exact same organization where I fell out of church anyway and have unfinished business with men's ministry. Because this church right now has no men's ministry. None. It has youth. It has children. It has women's. But it has no men. Well, if you look, as I'm sitting there and the devil's working on me, there's nobody in the church to have a men's ministry with. Literally, none. Zero. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, is this even the right church? 
But then I'm reminded through T.D. Jakes and what happened to me 14 years ago, this is the church. And if the pastor knows that I'm gay, then that's between him and God. At that point, God has called me for such as a time like this. God has reminded me of why I left the church anyway and that I have a calling and that I need to face that demon head on. God has pulled me out of Lodabar because I've been silenced for 14 years and that I have unfinished business for the kingdom of heaven. God is transferring power to me. This is on the heels of another message that I heard with regards to Gideon and him shifting wheat in a wine press. To hide it from people that were terrorizing Israel at the time. I don't have the reference with me. But this has kind of started every message that I've watched through T.D. Jakes has been confirmation about what the calling upon my life. Every single message. But my question I pose to the masses out there, what puts you in Lodabar? What puts you in a place of no pastors or no communication? Where was it in time that you was in church and you left church to wander the world with no green pastures? Where was it that you lost your voice? What happened in your life that silenced you? Were you involved in church before and something happens, like they found out that you was gay, you got mad and left the church and forsook, forsake God? I used to be an atheist. I was agnostic. I was a witch. And now I'm a Christian. I've tried them all. I wandered. See, when you are away from God, you wander. When you're away from God, you bed hop, you sleep around, you drink it excessively, you get into drugs, you get addicted to porn. You start doing things that you would normally not do without Jesus in your life. Because you now no longer have a moral compass. You start chasing face, fake ideas and the theological ideas you start believing as the movie that I watched the other night called well God's not dead you start believing that God is dead because you can't understand why God would allow the things that he has allowed to happen in your life because you don't understand his master plan See, God is a sovereign God. He will do what he wants to do. And if somebody out there has been, been being called by the power of the Holy Spirit, somebody out there, God is calling back that fell out of church. Someone out there is backslidden. Someone out there goes to church Wednesdays and Sundays, but you're living like the devil every, on the days in between. A secret life. God is calling you to holiness. God is calling you because he has a plan for you. He wants to transfer power. You have been struggling with your finances like I do time in, time out. But I still sow to seed faithfully my tithes. It hurt financially. But I did it. You've been struggling financially. Maybe you're a shopaholic. Maybe uh, you're living outside of your means. You have a house that you technically can't afford because you don't make enough hourly. And you don't know because you bought something out of self. There was no God in it. Maybe there was, but he, he allowed you to purchase that house to teach you a lesson. 
We, we don't understand the mind of God because we are his creation. He is our creator. It's kind of like as a child trying to understand their parents. We don't. We never will. To paint it in a more literal picture. God will do and use and destroy whomever he chooses to do so for his glory, for his pur purpose, for his path to righteousness. But I pray that the Holy Spirit gets a hold of somebody out there that needs to hear this message. Use my message and ask yourself, am I in Lodabar? What brought me here? Who did I allow to throw me into a place that I never wanted to be in the first place? That this was not where I was supposed to be? Ask yourself that question. Seriously. Ask yourself that question. And you'll find the answer. God will show it to you. He showed it to me today. It makes a whole lot of sense why I came under the attack that I did today. Because the devil, the devil knew I was due for a breakthrough. See, this is all part as God reminded me of my redemption. All right? Which I did a video on that some people have watched. Go and watch it if you haven't watched it. My redemption. This is a continuation of my redemption. Bringing me out of Lodabar. Using YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, or wherever. To give me my voice back. And God's going to, God's transferring power, to be quite honest. He's transferring power. So, leave a comment, like the video, share it, let's talk about it. What is your load of bar? What is your load of bar? Think about it. Think about it. Y'all be blessed this day.